Boost loses power. It's garbage for your motor if you don't have the right setup, and when you compare it to what actually makes power, big displacement high revving engines don't just win. They embarrass Boost chasing fanboys who ruined Supras. Because here's what everyone forgot. Dynos turned people soft with perfect conditions, ice cold intakes, zero heat soak, and numbers that vanish the moment an engine is out in the real world under real heat cooking itself alive. And that's where the truth shows up because boost doesn't create power, it creates pressure your engine has to fight. Engines only follow one rule shove more real air down their throat and they make more power. PSI isn't real air, it's just pressure. That's why PSI chasers stay delusional. Your boost gauge isn't showing power, it's showing strain. You can crank my 2 liter multi air to 30 psi all day. It looks impressive on a gauge, but it doesn't mean a damn thing if the engine can't swallow that air cleanly. A 5.0 Coyote makes more power at half the stress, half the heat, and none of the turbo garbage because big motors breathe and small boosted motors choke. None of this is magic or absolute. All of it only applies once you hit the limits of your turbo's efficiency, your intercooling, and your engine's ability to actually move air. Once that pressure turns into heat, timing falls on its face, exhaust flow backs up, and your high boost pull becomes your engine gasping for air while the turbo forces pressure into a motor already suffocating. And the more you push, the more the whole system pushes back. Meanwhile, big NA engines don't fight themselves. They breathe cleanly every revolution with no heat soak, no pressure cooker intake, and no turbo forcing air into a bottleneck. Because they breathe, they rev, and because they rev, they move more real air per second than any small boosted engine drowning in its own heat ever could. So sure, we could crank a little 2 liter to 30 psi. It'll look and sound wild, but it'll never touch a 5.0 Coyote swallowing air effortlessly while the turbo motor is out here just trying to survive. That's the difference people refuse to accept. One engine is making power, the other is just making pressure. And this is where OEM said, unless. Unless you build the engine to actually move that air, unless the head flows, unless the valves keep up, unless the intercooling isn't a joke, unless the turbo isn't choking itself on the top end, unless the whole system is designed to swallow pressure without turning into a furnace. Because heat kills power, and the second you take that hot, angry, pressurized boost air and actually chill it with a real intercooler, then suddenly all that pressurized air becomes something usable. The engine stops fighting it, finally starts using it, and that's the part people miss. Boost only works when the engine can breathe that pressurized air in and stay cool enough to not roll over and die. Once the air is cold, dense, and clean, and once the turbo isn't choking itself, then you make power. Because cold air hits the cylinders like a sledgehammer, it's heavier, it hits harder, and the engine actually has something to burn. But hot boost air, it's thin, it's weak, and it gives the engine nothing to work with. Because 30 psi of hot air will put a window in your block and lose you the race, but 30 psi of cold air will break your neck, since your engine doesn't care how much pressure you make, it cares how much air mass actually gets inside the cylinders to burn. Cold air is loaded with oxygen, and that's why cooling that 30 psi suddenly lets a 2 liter pull like a coyote.